the birth month. Each stone has unique meaning and significance, but not everyone knows the strange legends and history that surround them. So before we get started, please comment down below what your birthstone is, and if you have no idea what it is, you're about to find out. Originally, birthstones related to the 12 gemstones appearing on the breastplate of the high priest of the Israelites, described in the book of Exodus. But the tradition of wearing only one stone for your month of birth did not begin until the 16th century. Now, people believe that birthstones can provide good luck, protection, health, even powers. So I am here to tell you all of the very strange facts. Now, keep in mind, these were just things that people thought hundreds and hundreds of years ago. So I'm telling this to you for historical purposes, but I personally don't really believe that stones have any power or good or bad luck. To me, they are just beautiful works of art in nature, but I know that every single person has different thoughts about that and that's totally okay. All right, so let's start with the month of January, which is garnet. Now in modern day, it is said that garnet represents protection, but in history, this stone was thought to keep the wearer safe during travel. Now the word garnet is derived from a term that means seed because the gem resembles the color and shape of a pomegranate seed. Now there's a myth that suggests that the garnet originated with Persephone, the Greek goddess of sunshine. Persephone was captured by Hades, the god of the underworld, and before Hades released Persephone, he really wanted to guarantee her return. So he gave her some pomegranate seeds. They also thought that when a garnet is stolen, it is said to bring terrible bad luck to the thief until it is returned. Until it is returned to its rightful owner. Or they say that if your stone starts to lose its bright color, it means that danger and disaster is about to occur, so be careful. All right, let's move on to February, which is amethyst. And if you know me, you know that's my birth month. And I love this color so much, purple. Now in modern day, amethyst symbolizes wisdom because I'm just so smart, aren't I? But ancient Greeks thought that amethyst guarded against intoxication. And in fact, the word amethyst comes from amethystos, a Greek word meaning sober. And at one time, only royalty was allowed to wear them. I wasn't able to find out why this was, but I do know that the color purple has always represented royalty for some reason. All right, let's move on to March, which is aquamarine. And in modern day, it is said to represent serenity. Historically, it was thought to cure heart, liver, and stomach diseases. All one had to do was drink the water in which the gem had been soaking. It was also said to reverse the effects of someone that was poisoned. Early sailors also believed that aquamarine etched with the likeness of the sea god Neptune protected them against ocean dangers. So I guess those were all good things. Couldn't find anything bad about that one. Then we've got April, which is a diamond. And in modern day, it is said to symbolize strength. This stone was once thought to bring courage. In Sanskrit, the diamond is called Vajra, which also means lightning. And at one time, it was even thought that if you took a diamond into bed with you, it would cure your illness. Then we have May, which is emerald. And honestly, this is like my favorite stone to look at. It is so beautiful. I love green. So if this is your birth month, I'm kind of jealous of you. Now in modern day, it is said to symbolize hope. Emerald was one of Cleopatra's favorite gems and historically it was associated with fertility, rebirth, and love. Thousands of years ago, the ancient Egyptians mined the earth, suffering through extreme conditions to find the prized green emerald. Cleopatra was so taken with these stones that she claimed the mines for herself. In fact, she was known for wearing lots of huge emerald jewelry and she even gave emeralds carved with her portrait to her important visitors. Ancient Romans even went as far as to dedicate this stone to Venus, who was the goddess of love and beauty. It has been claimed that holding an emerald under one's tongue grants the ability to summon evil spirits. And apparently you should never gift someone an emerald on a Monday? Don't know why. Never explained that. Then we have June, and there's actually three different stones that go with June, so I guess uh, pick one. But there's pearl, alexandrite, and moonstone. And we're going to talk about pearl because that seems to be the most popular popular choice for this month. And in modern day, the pearl is said to symbolize purity. The ancient Greeks believed that pearls were the hardened tears of joy from Aphrodite, the goddess of love. And in ancient Japan, pearls were believed to be the tears of mermaids. However, some believe that they should not be given to a bride on her wedding day, as they can bring sadness or tears to her marriage. Then we have July, which is a ruby. And in modern day, it is said
said to symbolize vitality. Ruby was regarded by ancient Hindus as the king of gems. It was believed to protect its wearer from evil, and ancient Burmese soldiers went so far as to insert rubies under their skin to protect them from battle. Rubies were also historically associated with the planet Mars, with some people even believing that rubies are actually sparks struck from the planet that fell to Earth. And it says their fire will last until the world itself grows cold. Whatever that means, I guess they will last until the ends of Earth. Another belief is that a ruby can warn of impending danger. So when something bad is gonna happen, apparently they will darken and they will lighten again once that danger has passed. Interesting. Then we have August, which is peridot. And in modern day, this is said to symbolize beauty. It is sometimes called the evening emerald for its light green color. It was once believed that the green peridot crystals found in volcanic ashes were the tears of the volcano goddess Pili. And when set in gold, this gem was said to protect the wearer from nightmares. Then we have September, which is sapphire. I also love the color of this stone as well. In modern day, this is said to represent truth. It was once thought to guard against evil and poisoning, and it was believed that a venomous snake would die if placed in a vessel made of sapphire. Traditionally, it was also a favorite stone of priests and kings. It is also said that if a sapphire doesn't suit a person, it will bring them immense bad luck and bad fortune. So if this stone doesn't look good on you, you're in for bad luck. What the heck? Then we have October, which is opal, and some people also say the stone could be tourmaline. In modern day, this is said to represent confidence. Now this word actually comes from the Latin word opalis, meaning precious jewel. Necklaces and crowns with opals set in them were worn to repel evil and to protect eyesight. Opals were greatly valued by ancient monarchs for their protective powers, and it was also ingested in ground up powder to protect against nightmares. So when people were having bad dreams, they were like, here, eat some rocks. I swear it tastes good. Like forget nightmares. I would be up at night from a bellyache from that. In the late 19th century, Alfonso XII, King of Spain, experienced a spate of deaths in his family. This true story is so crazy to me. So it says his wife, grandmother, sister, and sister-in-law all died after receiving an opal ring. And what's so sad is that this opal ring was actually a gift from him. And each received this opal ring after the previous family member died. So basically everyone who got this died randomly. And then finally he suffered the same fate after wearing the ring himself, so people began to believe that opals brought death which is terrible. Then we have November, which is topaz or citrine. And in modern day, it is said to represent joy. During the romantic period and turn of the century Europe, citrine became more popular for the way it visually enhances gold jewelry. Citrine, like all forms of quartz, was believed to have magical powers and was worn as protection against evil and snake venom poisoning. I also wasn't able to find much more about this one or anything bad, so I guess that's a good thing too. And then lastly, we have December, which was turquoise. And this one is said to symbolize friendship. Since about 6000 BC, when it was first mined by the Egyptians, turquoise has been one of the most valuable opaque minerals in the jewelry business. Native Americans and Persians also valued it for its decorative and ornamental beauty. The Navajo believe that turquoise is a part of the sky that fell to earth. And turquoise rings in particular are thought to keep away evil spirits. I see a lot of common themes here with stones. Either they prevent nightmares, they protect you from evil spirits, they have healing properties, heal you from poison. A lot of this is very similar. So don't forget to comment down below which birthstone is yours. So I do have a very creepy, creepy past to talk to you guys about today that has to do with this boy who made a wish on his birthday and everything went wrong for him. I love how I say creepy, creepy past does. If you don't already know, it's gonna be creepy. But before we get into that, I really wanna talk a little bit about the history of birthdays and some very creepy birthday traditions around the world. Now, the earliest mention of a birthday in history was in 3000 BCE. And it was actually in reference to a pharaoh birthday and that was such a long time ago guys obviously people couldn't really have birthdays until they created the calendar and realized what time really was it is said that German bakers invented the birthday cake back in the 18th century kids were given one candle atop the cake for each year they had been alive plus one more for the hope of living for at least one more year after that so yeah in my research I found out that birthday cakes originally started in Germany so I 
guess everyone else around the world was like, whoa, what a cool idea. We should do that too. <laughs> Many ancient cultures also believed it was important to blow out candles on your cake because the smoke carried their prayers to the heavens. And I know nowadays you're also supposed to make a wish when you blow out your candles. As weird as it sounds, I don't think I've ever made a wish on my birthday. I think it's mostly because I knew it wouldn't come true, but I do remember this time it wasn't on my birthday. I think I was like six years old. I went up to my bedroom window and I looked up at the sky trying to see God and I was praying and I was like, please, please make it rain candy tomorrow. Please, I pray that it will rain down candy on me when I wake up tomorrow morning. And that was like a major wish that I had and I remember waking up in the morning going to my window like, is there candy out there? And there wasn't and I was so sad. And I went to my mom and I'm like, I prayed last night that it would rain down candy. And she was like, no Jess, no, that, that's not how it works, I'm sorry. So I have made some weird wishes, but I've never like wished on my birthday. If you have ever made a wish on your birthday, comment down below what you usually wish for. So let's get into the history of the happy birthday song. Now it's kind of hard to point to the song's definitive origins, but it is said that the melody of the song was written by two sisters named Patty and Mildred Hill in the 1800s. The original song was called Good Morning to All and they sang it to their kindergarten class. Then later on, the melody of that song became the one for happy birthday. So technically those sisters just created the happy birthday melody and then later on people like changed the lyrics to happy birthday. So here are just some general weird birthday facts. Apparently October 5th is the most common birthday in the United States. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because nine months before that it's New Year's Eve. So I guess it's kind of a common conception date. <laughs> and May 22nd is apparently the least common birthday ever. So if you have a birthday on May 22nd, you are rare. Comment down below if that's your birthday. Don't lie, don't lie, okay? I really wanna know. Then there's something called a golden birthday. And it is the year that you turn the same age as your birthday. So for example, let's say your birthday is February 25th. When you're turning 25 years old and you have your birthday on the 25th day of the month, that is your golden birthday. So for example, I was born on February 14th. So when I was 14 years old, that was my golden birthday. Now I know in my family, we call it a champagne birthday. So you're supposed to have like this huge champagne party, but obviously I was 14 years old and I could not do that. Now let's talk about a couple creepy birthday traditions around the world. Apparently in Switzerland, a clown will stalk you all day long. The clown's ominous presence is designed to generate the kind of built up excitement for your birthday. For a fee, a clown named Dominic Deville will terrorize your child in the form of menacing phone calls, texts, and letters for the weeks leading up to their birthday. And then on the day of their birthday, he'll randomly show up and throw a cake in their face. Sounds wonderful. But apparently in my research, it's supposed to just be all for good fun. It's not supposed to actually be like terrorizing, but sometimes that happens. And parents can always call it off if their kid gets too freaked out. But apparently most kids love it, which I find very interesting because I would not want a clown stalking me before my birthday. No, thank you. Then apparently in Russia on your birthday, ghosts will return lost objects to you. In certain parts of Russia, birthdays aren't just about gifts. Sometimes they're about objects you already own being wrapped up by ghosts and presented to you as new offerings. So apparently during the year, Russian spirits are supposed to take items from children who are misbehaving. So if you're being bad, a ghost might take your Barbie mansion and they'll wrap it up on your birthday and give it back to you. And parents sort of turn this into a fun game for their children. So on their birthday, they'll get a bunch of gifts and they have to guess which gift is the one that was wrapped up by a ghost. Which I assume would be pretty easy because you would see your Barbie mansion and be like, huh, I had that six months ago. <laughs> and lastly, I wanna talk to you guys about a creepypasta called The Birthday Wish. This story is about a boy named Thomas who was about to celebrate his eighth birthday. He had a younger sister named Ava who was five years old. And right before Thomas's party was about to start, him and his sister got into a huge fight as siblings usually do. And it was over such a silly thing like the literal TV remote. Thomas wanted to watch Arthur and Ava wanted to watch Teletubbies. Their argument over the remote got so extreme that Ava started pulling Thomas's hair. So obviously their mother saw the commotion intervened right before the party started. Thomas was so mad at his sister, he couldn't get over it, couldn't believe she was fighting with him on his birthday. As the night went on, it was time for Thomas to have his cake. Everyone sang happy birthday and then came the moment for him to make a wish before he blew out his candle. 
candles. He thought very, very hard about what he wanted and then he blew them out. After the party was over, Thomas and Ava went to bed and their bedrooms were right beside each other in the hallway. But Thomas wasn't able to go to sleep. He felt himself just feeling wide awake, very anxious, just not right. He was constantly looking out his bedroom door into the hallway. And hours went by as he just laid there. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And then he heard a very startling sound. It almost sounded like one of the downstairs windows being broken. Then soon after, it sounded like someone was slowly climbing up the stairs. And the closer it got to the top of the stairs near the hallway, Thomas was able to hear this creepy, heavy breathing sound. So he pulled his covers over his head, afraid of what was gonna happen next. Whatever it was, it was walking down the hallway closer to his bedroom. And each step echoed in his ears until it sounded like it stopped right in front of his doorway. It was silent for about five minutes while he held the covers over his head, but then he decided to take a peek. He pulled the covers down and there, standing in the light of his doorway, was this tall, thin creature. He could make out every bone in its body. His rib cage could basically be seen in full detail. And his his arms were so unnaturally long that they almost touched the floor. Its eyes even had this slight glow of white. And after a few moments of staring at each other, the creature croaked. Dinner. Thomas shook his head and said, I take it back, I take it back, please. But the creature just let out a cackle and proceeded to his sister's room. Thomas jolted out of bed and ran after the creature, but he was too late. The creature had its mouth stretched so wide open that it could almost fit a full car. And in a swift second, it gobbled up Ava's whole entire bed with Ava sleeping inside of it. So Thomas let out a scream and his mother ran down the hallway. And when she got there, the creature was gone, Ava was gone, and Ava's bed was gone. So the mother was confused and she was like, where's Ava and where is her bed? And Thomas said, I made a wish. I didn't mean it. What did you wish for? The mother asked. I was so mad at her today that I made a wish that the boogeyman would come and eat her up. And that's the way the story ends. It's kind of sad, like poor Ava. I feel like I could never be mad enough at Mandy that I would want the boogeyman to come and take her. No. So yeah, in the end, it's basically just a warning saying, be careful what you wish for on your birthday. The very first story is called Happy Birthday Backwards. This is a story about two best friends named Hannah and Alicia who discovered something terrifying. One day, Alicia came to school and told Hannah that she downloaded this app on her phone that played songs backwards. So it made the song sound either really creepy or really funny. So the two girls sat outside at recess playing all of their favorite songs backwards. They sat there laughing and gasping at the strange sounds coming from their phone, and everything was all fun and games until the next day. Alicia came to school as pale as a ghost. She wouldn't make eye contact with anybody, she wouldn't talk to anyone, and when Hannah asked her what was wrong, she just shook her head and refused to answer. So Hannah continued to beg her to tell her what the heck was going on. And finally, Alicia said, I tried happy birthday. And Hannah was super confused at first as to what she meant, but then Alicia continued, I tried playing happy birthday backwards. So Hannah asked her what it sounded like, but Alicia did not want to continue her story. She just ran off to class. At lunchtime, Hannah said she wanted to hear happy birthday backwards as well, but Alicia said it wasn't a good idea. But Hannah begged her. So they both walked into a janitor's closet where it was quiet and listened to the song. Now, Hannah wasn't the same after that. She went the rest of the day not talking to anybody. And when she went home, her parents were really concerned about her. Days went by, then weeks. And after a month, of Hannah not talking, her parents brought her to the doctor. It was there that she confessed what she had experienced. The doctor asked her what she heard when she played Happy Birthday backwards. And Hannah shook her head and took this deep breath and said, it tells you when your last birthday is going to be. It tells you when you're gonna die. And that's how the uh, story ends. So I guess never listen to Happy Birthday backwards. Why does this make me wanna do it on the vlog channel? Should I do it? But I can just imagine how absolutely creepy 
creepy that would be. All right, guys, the next story is called The Hairdo. There was a middle-aged woman who was very vain and would always wear her hair up in a big bun. She was very proud of her hairdo and thought she was the most fashionable of all of her friends. Now, apparently, this woman was also very lazy and didn't like having to spend time cleaning her hair. So instead, she just left her hair up in a bun always. She never took it out. She never cleaned it. She never washed it. Whenever she took a shower, she would wear a shower cap to make sure the water didn't mess up her hairstyle. And then even at night, she would sleep with a towel wrapped around her head to make sure that nothing moved out of place. After a while, her hair began to smell and to mask the odor, she would just put hairspray on it. When her scalp started to itch, she would just put hairspray on it. Even though all her head did was itch all day long, she would just continue to put hairspray in it. One morning, when she didn't come downstairs for breakfast, her husband went up to the bedroom to wake her up. To his horror, he discovered that his wife had died in her sleep. At first, the police thought she must have had a heart attack in her sleep because there wasn't a mark on her body. However, when the autopsy was being done on her, they finally examined her hair and found something terrifying. A black widow spider had made its way into the bun of her hair and laid its eggs. And when the baby spiders hatched, they had eaten all the way into her skull and into her brain. And that's how the story ends, guys. Stories like this creep me out so much. Like I literally get the creepy crawlies all over my arms. That's so gross. All right, we have to move on. This next story is called Pedestrian Crossing. During this one evening, this person was standing at the pedestrian crossing on a busy street waiting for the light to change. And they looked over across the street to see the other people standing waiting to walk across as well. They spotted someone that made shivers go down their spine. There was a woman standing on the opposite side of the street who looked very strange. At first, they thought that maybe their eyes were playing tricks on them because they could see her pants and jacket perfectly, but her face and hands were a complete blur. So they rubbed their eyes and looked again, but it made no difference. Her face was just so fuzzy and indistinct. They even got this very strange feeling that they could almost see through her, which obviously is not normal. They said this feeling was just so extremely unsettling. Well, the light turned green and people began to walk across the pedestrian crossing. And this woman seemed to be walking straight towards them. So they started to veer to the left, trying to avoid where she was walking. But then the woman started to turn and continued to walk straight towards them. They passed each other in the middle of the street. And as she walked by them, she hissed in their ear and said, I know you can see me. And that's the end of the story. So obviously it's some sort of creepy dark spirit or ghost that usually isn't seen by people. And obviously this person did see them. That's terrifying. Now this is another video where I tell you guys three creepy stories in one video. I love this kind of thing. And the first one is about a really creepy surprise party. So the story is called The Invitation. And this story actually kind of reminds me of the tea party video that I did about a month ago, but it's definitely a little bit different. Otherwise I wouldn't be making a whole other video about it. But this story is about a girl that saw an envelope sitting in her locker one day when she went to open it. It had her name written directly on the front in red pen. And when she opened it up, she saw the words, you're invited to a surprise party. Now she was very, very excited about this until she saw who the party was for. The name read Jessica W, which was the name of her best friend, except they spelled it wrong. Her name had two S's and the invite only had one, but she just shrugged it off thinking that it obviously must have been a typo. Now the surprise party was in a week and every day she was so excited about it. And she made sure that she did not say a word to Jessica about this party coming up. She had no idea who else was going. She just had a date and a time. The day of the surprise party, she put on a dress, she wrapped her gift and was on her way. Now the address took her to an old abandoned bowling alley, which she thought was quite bizarre, but she thought that maybe they chose like a rundown place so they could make the inside look amazing and all decorated. And that way Jessica wouldn't know what was coming. She was trying to rationalize it, you know? So she walked inside and it was pitch black. She 
started calling out to see if anyone was there. She even turned on the flashlight on her phone and continued to wander around. But she had this really terrible feeling the whole time. Then in the corner of her eye, she saw this tall, dark figure watching her. When she turned to look, she could see the outline of its body and it was clearly holding this roll of duct tape. And as it lifted up the tape in front of its face, it said, surprise, in a very deep and creepy voice. She ran out of there as fast as she could and notified the police. And apparently this had been happening to quite a few people over the past month. Students had been getting these fake surprise party invitations with their best friend's name on it, except it was always spelled wrong. And that's how you knew it wasn't actually for them. And uh, that's how the story ends. So if you ever get an invite to a surprise party and the name is spelled wrong, run away as fast as you can. All right, guys, this next story is called Where's Mommy? There was a taxi driver whose wife disappeared, leaving him with a five-year-old daughter to bring up on his own. Now, the father had to work very, very long hours, and he wasn't able to spend much time at home with his daughter. He went out early in the morning, he came home very late at night, and his neighbor was a single woman, and she kindly volunteered to come over and look after the child while he was gone. But every single night, this child would lie in her room awake, crying her eyes out and calling her father's name. Then one night, she stopped crying. Listening at her bedroom door, the neighbor could hear the little girl laughing. It sounded as if she was talking to somebody. So she thought that maybe her father had just come home early? So she opened the bedroom door and saw that the little girl was just sitting by herself on her bed. So the neighbor really wanted to get to the bottom of this strange behavior. Who are you talking to at night when your father's out working? She asked the girl. My mom, replied the little girl. Whenever I'm lonely and crying, my mom comes and hugs me and kisses me on the cheek. The woman was extremely shocked and said, but I'm always here and the front door is always locked. How does she get in? The little girl pointed to the basement door and whispered, she comes crawling out of there. A chill went down the neighbor's spine and she immediately called the police. And that's, uh, that's how the story ends, guys. When I first read that, it definitely gave me chills. It's so creepy. And lastly, we have a story called Sea of Hands. A group of teenagers went on a trip to the seaside. They found a cliff that overlooked the water and sat down to have a picnic. Afterwards, a bunch of the teenagers decided to go for a swim and they took turns diving off of the cliff and into the water. One girl had brought her camera with her and she began taking pictures of her friends as they jumped. One of the boys jumped off the cliff and landed in the sea with an enormous splash. His friends were clapping and cheering, but as they peered over the cliff, they couldn't see him anymore. He never came up for air. The boy the boy never surfaced and his tearful friends had to call the police. A team of rescue workers had to come. They took the boy out of the water. He had not survived. He had actually drowned, which is absolutely horrifying. A week later after attending the funeral, the dead boy's friends were looking through the photos that they had taken that day. Then they came across one picture in particular and as they looked at it, they stopped and stared in horror. It was a photo of the boy who had drowned, taken just as he was jumping off the cliff and about to hit the water. Clearly visible in the photograph sticking out of the water were countless pale white hands reaching for him, clutching the boy tightly and dragging him into the sea. So uh, yeah, and that's how that story ends. Maybe they thought it was like a bunch of spirits in the water pulling him down. Maybe it was mermaids. Maybe it was, I mean, who even knows what creature was in there, but it had hundreds of hands and pulled the boy down. Imagine actually catching something like that on camera that would be absolutely terrifying. Grimace made his very first appearance in 1971 as a part of the newly launched McDonald Land campaign designed for young children. Now, Grimace used to look a lot different than he does now. Originally, he had two pairs of arms, so four in total, and he was just created to be this malicious beast. Grimace would use all of his arms to steal people's McDonald's milkshakes, and he was known as the evil Grimace. Kids were really scared of him, 
parents were constantly complaining. Like whenever kids saw a photo of them, they would basically scream and freak out. And he just wasn't a very pleasant character at first. And that could be where he got his name because people would grimace whenever they saw him. And here's a little clip of what he used to look like. And yes, this is gonna be extremely bad quality and pixelated. This was like back in the 60s. So here you go. Because the evil grimace had grabbed all the cups. <laughs> you, duh. Where's the Coke? Duh. Where are the shakes? Oh, oh, oh my! Ah, I've been picked for the McDonald Land Beauty Contest. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Where's the contest? Yeah, I don't know why they decided on the four arms thing. It just, it is really scary. I could imagine myself being a kid watching that being like, ah. Oh. Are you serious right now? So they decided to change it up a bit and they morphed him into someone a little friendlier, someone known for sharing the joy of milkshakes with his friends. And now he's a lovable purple giant that is one of McDonald's most recognizable characters with his bright smile and his arms always open for a hug. Only two arms now. Thank goodness. Even though his fans don't really know what creature he's supposed to be, like what what is he really? In 2021, it came out that he's supposed to be a giant taste bud, but I don't really believe that. Other people believe that maybe he's an embodiment of a milkshake. And in 1999, they came out with an animated series of movies called The Wacky Adventures of Ronald McDonald. And there was one movie specifically about his backstory. It was called The Legend of Grimace Island. And it showed that he came from this super large family. They all had their private island. It showed his grandma Winky, aunts Millie and Tilly, his brother King Gonga, and his Irish uncle O'Grimacy, who is basically a green version of Grimace, who is associated with McDonald's green shamrock shake. So yeah, he definitely has a, a large family, which is interesting. So let's talk about the Grimace shake, because that's uh, where this trend all started. On June 12th of this year, literally this past month, McDonald's came out with limited edition Grimace Shakes. It was released as a part of the Grimace birthday meal promotion, which celebrated Grimace's 52nd birthday. It's apparently berry flavored, which isn't surprising, but I wouldn't know because they're not available in Canada. Nothing ever is. But yeah, like I said, the main reason why I even made this video was to talk about this weird trend going around. This trend has turned this lovable McDonald's character into something much scarier. They've basically turned him back into a villain. So this Grimace Shake trend is also known as the Grimace Incident, and it has just skyrocketed over TikTok. Hashtag Grimace Shake has generated over 700 million views. A typical video starts with someone excitingly saying they're gonna try the Grimace Shake, they just got it from McDonald's, they're holding it in their hands, ready to try it, but right before they do, they wish Grimace a happy birthday. But as soon as they take a sip, the camera cuts to this terrifying scene. They're either transported somewhere else, or or there's this horrifying aftermath of the person passed out on the ground or wherever. They're either dead or dying, and they have the Grimace shake just sort of pouring out of their mouth, pooling all around them. I guess it's supposed to emulate like blood, but it's purple blood because it's Grimace. And, it, and people are saying that it's because Grimace is collecting all of his victims. Now, obviously these are all a work of fiction. The shake isn't actually dangerous, but it's still very, very jarring to see. Like my sister and I, have been sharing these videos back and forth because we're, I mean, it's intriguing and people are very creative. But yeah, since this trend, I've also been seeing a lot of Grimace creepypastas online. Like I saw this one about this girl who says that when she was young, she was watching a McDonald's commercial and it was supposed to be only 12 seconds long and Grimace came on the screen and he was talking to the kids, but all of a sudden his arms started going in these weird directions. His legs started cracking, like all of his bones were cracking into this strange sort of creature version of Grimace and the commercial went on for hours instead of just 12 seconds and this girl was like glued to the screen she couldn't look away and when her parents walked in the room Grimace was essentially this like spider version of himself like all over the screen and they had to like kick the TV over to turn it off I mean there's so many creepy things about Grimace online but yeah it started from this very creepy trend so of course they had to make a video talking about it 
I'm going to be telling you the most popular slash controversial toy that came out the year that you were born. So while you're watching this, comment down below which toy represents you. It has to be the year that you were born. Okay, so let's start with the year that I was born, which was 1994. I know, it's so long ago. The year I was born, Power Rangers came out. Now, not all of these toys are like creepy or controversial, only a group of them, and I will tell you which ones those are. Power Rangers were the most popular toy to give for Christmas in 1994. Each figurine cost only $10, and they actually had one billion in sales that first year. Now, I never owned any Power Rangers, but comment down below if you did. Next, we have a 1995, which is the year my husband Ty was born, and the most popular toy that year was Pogs. Recycling took on a whole new life when a disposable bottle cap from a Hawaiian drink called Passion Orange Guava turned into a 90s game craze. And actually, a teacher was the one who first started this whole Pog craze. She used the drink's cap to teach her students a game her grandparents had played on their Hawaiian plantations with milk bottle lids. They started being mass produced with pop culture images on them that people would collect. I remember having a ton of Pogs when I was a kid, and I actually think I got a lot of them from McDonald's as well. Then we have 1996, and this was Tickle Me Elmo, and yes, this was one of the most controversial, creepy toys. I've done a whole video on it. Inventor Ron Dubrin developed an electronic chip that responded to motion by emitting a giggle, and he put it in a stuffed monkey. His creation didn't catch fire until Tycho placed it in Elmo. It proved to be so popular that parents drove miles and waited for hours in search of this toy. Now, I might do a whole other video on Tickle Me Elmo because there are so many creepy stories, hundreds of paranormal stories with this toy that people have experienced. So if you want me to do another Tickle Me Elmo video, give this video a thumbs up because I definitely will. Then in 1997, the most popular toy was the Tamagotchi. This digital cyber pet became a huge success right away. Kids couldn't wait to adopt their own little creature that they could take care of. But this whole story actually has a very dark side. The egg-shaped toy with a liquid crystal screen expired if children left it unattended for more than five or six hours a day. And this actually started to become very traumatic for young kids because they would actually fall in love with this pet and then it would die while they were at school or while they were sleeping because they couldn't constantly be with it 24 seven. Psychologists called this effect on young children, the Tamagotchi effect. Like this was actually a phenomenon going around where kids were being like psychologically destroyed because of these toys. I used to like literally sneak them into my pencil cases at school to just make sure that I could keep an eye on it and keep it alive, but they became banned from my school because people just couldn't stop touching them and holding them and playing with them. Then in 1998, the most popular toy was Furby, and this was also very controversial. People have a lot of creepy stories about this as well. Furby is an American electronic robot toy that was originally released in 1998 by Tiger Electronics. It resembles a hamster or owl-like creature and went through a period of being a must-have toy following its holiday season launch. I used to have like the mini Furbies, like the ones you would get at like McDonald's or the dollar store. I never had like a huge full-on Furby, but if you guys remember in 2018, I bought a haunted Furby, which wasn't the best choice I've ever made. Then in 1999, we have Pokemon, which I feel like is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I need to talk about what Pokemon is. Everybody knows what Pokemon is. In 2000, we had the Razor Scooter. No need to master the skateboard when you can get on this sleek modern scooter. The Razor Scooter became a rage for kids who wanted streamlined wheels to scoot around on. Now, I'm not sure if I ever had this because I would have only been like six years old at the time and I was a very clumsy child. So I probably did not own this. Then in 2001, we had Bratz dolls, which kind of were controversial because of the way they were dressed. Parents weren't really comfortable with their kids playing with a doll that had a tiny little mini skirt. Created by Carter Bryant and MGA Entertainment, Bratz dolls were marketed as fashionable and glitzy and given modern names like Chloe, Jade, Sasha, and Yasmin. By 2005, over 125 million dolls were sold around the world, earning MGA 2 billion in sales. I owned like every single Bratz doll to ever exist. I think I almost liked them more than Barbies, but there are a ton of weird things to do with them. I also made a video on that a couple years ago. Then in 2002, there was Beyblade. Kids could compete 
in a battle with these contemporary spinning tops from Hasbro. With names like Drago, Storm Pegasus, and Dark Wolf, the company sold 150 million of the tops, earning a whopping 500 million in sales. Now, I remember these actually ended up being banned from the playgrounds at my school because kids would literally battle it out outside and would get into physical fights. Like these toys became violent. It wasn't very good. Okay, in 2003, we have Robo Sapien. This toy is capable of walking by itself and it can grasp objects with either of its hands and throw grasped objects with mild force. It has a small loudspeaker unit which can broadcast several different vocalizations. The product was very successful over the Christmas season with over 1.5 million units sold because people had never seen anything like it. There's literally a quote calling it humanoid with attitude that comes to life at your command and performs amazing tasks. I have never seen or heard of this thing before so please comment down below if you ever own this. I don't know why, like robots really scare me. We're gonna go through these next few very quickly because they're very self-explanatory. 2004 was Nintendo DS, 2005 was Xbox 360, 2006 was Nintendo Wii, and 2007 was the iPod Touch. So all like gaming and technology, we all know what these ones are. Then in 2008, we have something called Zuzu Pets. Forget actual hamsters, this robotic hamster ran on batteries instead. The high demand for the real pet led creator Russ Hornsby to design Zuzus. Much like the real thing, they even made affectionate noises when cuddled. According to the Washington Post, the company made at least 70 million in its launch the first year. Now, if you guys remember my old story time videos, I owned like 10 plus hamsters growing up. So I don't think I ever had a Zuzu pet because I had the real thing. And I can't say they really make affectionate noises when you cuddle them. I got bit, I got pooped on. They're not super cuddly. Then in 2009, we have something called Mindflex. Mindflex is a toy by Mattel which apparently uses brain waves to steer a ball through an obstacle course. The brain waves are captured with the enclosed EEG headset, which allows the user to control an airstream with their concentration, thus lifting or lowering the delicate foam ball. Scientists have questioned whether the toy actually measures brain waves or just randomly moves the ball. Some people think it's just an illusion, like you think you're controlling it, but you're actually not. But there are some other scientists who say, yes, you actually are controlling this with your mind. I don't know guys, that freaks me out so much. Then in 2018, we have the iPad, which is also very self-explanatory. Then in 2011, we have Barbie Video Girl, which I have done a whole video about. Super creepy, this thing shouldn't have been allowed to be in stores at all. Barbie Video Girl has a gaping hole in her chest disguised as a fashion pendant that contains a camera lens. She has a color LCD view screen on her back and 256 megabytes of internal memory are packed into her plastic body. The FBI was actually concerned about who would be able to hack into these cameras to watch kids. It was all over the news, parents were afraid, people were returning them. It was just a privacy hazard. Then in 2012, we have Fidget Friends. They made their debut in July of 2011 at the New York Toy Fair and are similar to the famous toy Furby. In 2012, the Fidget Friends Interactive Figures was awarded Girl Toy of the Year. Now I've never heard or seen of these things in my entire life, but that's probably because at this point I was going into college and this stuff wouldn't interest me anymore. Then in 2013, we have something called Big Hugs Elmo. Once again, Elmo was the must have toy for Christmas. This soft blush toy was capable of returning children's cuddles, singing lullabies and playing various games. This version of Elmo could also say 50 different sounds and phrases to keep children entertained and to help them learn. I'm sorry, but why is anything Elmo absolutely terrifying to me? Like I see pictures of this toy on the shelf placed the wrong way and it looks like Elmo is attacking a child. No thank you. Then in 2014 we have the Elsa dolls. Disney's hottest movie of the time was also followed by a wave of must-have merchandise. The Snow Glow Elsa doll was highly sought after around in Christmas of 2014 and it sang and said various lines from the movie. Everybody wanted this Elsa doll. If you guys don't remember, a little while ago I did a video on a haunted Elsa doll. Pretty creepy. And then in 2015 we have the BB-8 toy. Star Wars has always been popular and Star Wars toys equally so. So when Disney joined up with LucasArts, everyone knew there would be some pretty special toys on the market that year. The BB-8 droid was no exception. This voice controlled bot made by Spiro was the most popular toy in Christmas of 2015. I actually wish I had this toy. This actually looks really, really cool, especially because I am a Star Wars fan. But yeah, I don't think we're gonna continue past the year 2015 because if you were born after 
after 2015 and watching me, that means that you are six years old or younger. Aren't you scared of my videos? <laughs> I mean, you're totally fine to be here if you're six years old or younger. I just hope I'm not like giving you nightmares or anything. All right guys, so the first story is called The Invitation. There's an unfortunate story about a teenage girl that got a strange invitation in the mail. It was sealed with wax and looked dated and old. It also had the scent of must. So she brought it inside and showed everybody in her family. And she asked them if they knew where it was from, but everyone was just as confused as she was. She opened it up to see that it was an invitation to a tea party, but it didn't say whose. It gave an address, a time and a dress code. But the creepiest part was that at the bottom it said, no plus ones allowed, please arrive unattended. Which I don't know about you guys, but that's kind of sketchy. The invitation looked like it was written in gold and the girl was mesmerized and so intrigued by it. Her family warned her not to go and made her promise that she would throw out the invitation right away. But the next day when her parents went into her bedroom, she was nowhere to be seen. And they found the invitation lying open on her bed and their hearts sunk when they knew where she had gone. Now after this she was never seen again and when her family went to the address the tea party was said to be at they arrived at an old abandoned building. It was then found out that multiple people had gone missing after receiving this mysterious tea party invitation and there's actually this legend that goes along with the story that is really eerie. It says that if you take an empty invitation and put it in your mailbox the creepy tea party invite will be in the envelope. Now, some people think that maybe this girl was taken to a much better place. Like maybe she wasn't harmed or in any danger, but somewhere better. But other people think that no, this is not a place you ever wanna go. So maybe I'll try this invitation game over on my vlog channel. Do I really wanna go to this tea party? I don't know. All right, this next tale is called The Tea Party. And it's by a user called Nocturnal Nanny. Now, this is only a summary of the story that I'm gonna be telling you today. It's much, much longer and more detailed, so if you want to go read it for yourself, definitely go check it out. But it's about this girl named Brie that loved having tea parties in her room every single Sunday afternoon. Now, she just lived with her father, so every single Sunday she would invite him to come to her tea party. Now, he always told her that she was allowed to invite her friends over for tea, but instead she only ever invited over her imaginary friend named Natalie. So her father walked into her bedroom and said, saw that there were three little chairs sitting around a table. One for Brie, one for the father, and one for Natalie. Brie began pouring tea into everyone's cups, and Natalie's cup was purple because apparently that was her favorite color. You should say hi to Natalie. It's rude to ignore her, Brie said to her father. So he just went along with it and greeted her invisible friend, smiling at the empty chair where she sat. Now he assumed that most kids her age probably had imaginary friends, but what was strange was that Brie had a whole strange backstory about Natalie. She said that Natalie had grown up in a foster home her whole life, never having been able to stay longer than a few months at a time. She has a lazy eye and no one likes her because she's scary looking. And now she lives under the neighbor's basement. Now it made him very uneasy when he heard that part. He couldn't understand why she would make up such a tragic tale. As he sat there, he watched his daughter speak enthusiastically to her friend, and then she poured everyone another round of juice. So he took a mental note that she would probably need to use the bathroom soon. He then excused himself to go downstairs to get Brie some cheese and crackers. And on his way downstairs, he heard the bathroom door slam shut. It was a father's instinct. He knew she'd have to go. He returned shortly after and asked his daughter if she remembered to wash her hands. But she shook her head and said, Natalie went to the washroom, not me. But yeah, she washed her hands. Once they were finished with their tea and crackers, Brie announced that Natalie had to go home now. And holding the air in her hand, her father watched her walk Natalie to the front door and hugged her goodbye. Once she was satisfied that her friend had left, Brie turned around and ran back to her playroom, announcing that she was gonna color her a picture for next time. So the father made his way to the kitchen when he suddenly heard the doorbell ring. And as he opened the door, he found his front porch empty. And just before 
before he can close the door again, he heard Bree yell down at him from the other room. Natalie says she forgot her bracelet in my room. Can you grab it for her, Daddy? So trying to play along, he walked back into her room and glanced down at the purple teacup and realized there was a bracelet inside. His hands began to shake as he picked it up. He slowly turned it over and saw the name Natalie, delicately written on the inside. And that is how the story ends. So here's the theory that people have. The neighbors kidnapped a little girl and hid her under the floorboards of the basement after she passed. So obviously that means that Brie would be having tea parties with this girl's ghost, which is horrifying. I always find imaginary friend stories to be really eerie and just scary because a lot of the times it makes you wonder, is this just in someone's head or is it actually a ghost? Because people say that pets and little kids have that like ability to see stuff like that that adults would never be able to see so yeah it just it just really creeps me 